Heavenly God, we pray that you will be with us in this day. We pray that your name will be glorified. And we pray that as we reflect upon your word, uh, you will speak to our hearts and our minds, and that we will be uh, better equipped to serve you uh, during uh, times like this. And so, Father, we, we open our, uh, our hearts to you uh, to listen to you because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, our theme for this uh, uh, gathering is uh, taken from Ephesians uh, chapter 4. And there is that text that was uh, shared with uh, each one of us. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Make every effort to keep, number one, the unity of the spirit. And number two, in the bond of peace. Make every effort. Fanyeni juhudi to keep the unity. Kulinda umoja. Of the spirit, umoja wa roho, in the bond of peace. Uh, it's Paul uh, making an appeal uh, to the church at Ephesus. And it may be helpful for us to, uh, to think around the, the context uh, that Paul is writing in. Paul is in prison. And, and that is evident from uh, uh, verse 1 of that uh, chapter 4. As he writes this later, he is a man in bondage. If you read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, this is how he introduces uh, his address. Uh, Paul says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. So there are high chances that he, he really, he literally is in prison as he addresses the church at Ephesus and as he addresses us too. And my, my, my reading uh, of that text uh, indicated that uh, the reason he was in prison uh, in Rome was that he had been arrested for having brought a Gentile into the temple. Uh, that he brought a Gentile into the temple. And uh, obviously, there, there were very, very... Um, uh, weighty sensitivities around race, uh, cultural divisions uh, between Jews and Gentiles. Uh, it was a major issue uh, in the church of Ephesus. Uyu ni Muyaudi, uyu si Muyaudi, na kadalika. But Paul brings, brings a Gentile uh, into the temple and he's arrested. And so Paul writes, uh, Paul writes the church, and he, he tells them, he tells them, I therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, I beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you are called. Now I see kwamba mutembe, Kwa njia ambayo inaambatana na mwito, mwito huu mkubwa ambao mko nao. That is what Paul uh, tells uh, the church. And more, more specifically, uh, in verse 3, uh, which is our, our theme, uh, Paul tells the church, endeavoring. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. To endeavor is to try very hard. Kujaribu sana. Endeavor. Commit yourself. Commit yourself, Paul says, to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Peace. 
Now, uh, uh, IT, I think uh, they are having a bit of challenges, and that's quite normal. Uh, Paul is, is pretty aware uh, of the challenges that the church at Ephesus is facing. Uh, he knows that this is a church that has a background in occult practices of Asia Minor. Things like magic, uh, things like astrology, etc. And you can find that in Acts chapter 19, uh, verse 19. There's a reference, a reference to that. And so he, he knows that this is a church that has some background. It's a church that ha has some struggles. Struggles around divisions, struggles around cultural differences, uh, struggles around uh, pagan practices. And so he tells them, Jaribuni, I beseech you, I, I, a prisoner in the Lord, I beseech you, make every effort. Fanyeni juhudi kubwa sana to keep the unity of the spirit uh, in the bond of peace. Wana yesu wa sefiwe. I'm sure that if he were to write to us today, it would more or less be the same address. Because the issues that the church was struggling with then, the church is struggling with now. Uh, the questions that were there uh, at, the, at, 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 the, at the church in Ephesus are questions which are there even today. Our cultural backgrounds, the challenge of, uh, of, of paganism, uh, the challenge of occult practices, the, the, the challenges around a divided, a divided country, uh, divided around ethnicity, uh, divided around social stratification, many, many divisions, east, west, north, south. These are issues that we still struggle with now. So this letter to the church at Ephesus uh, is relevant, not just for, for them, but for us as well. When Paul says, I beseech you, I beseech you to make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, he may as well tell that to the Anglican Church of Kenya. He may as well tell that to the universal church. I beseech you, make every, make every effort uh, to keep the unity of the spirit uh, in the bond of peace. This unity is not to be achieved, but it is to be kept. Sio kwamba wewe na mimi tunaleta unity hii, wewe na mimi kazi yetu ni kulinda hiyo unity. Because Christ already left one church. Bwana Yesu wa sefiwe. One God, one Christ, one spirit, one baptism. So it's really not your work to create this unity. Your work and my work is to maintain this unity. And you can find that uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, uh, Paul says, endeavor to keep, endeavor to keep, not to create, not to construct, not to give birth to unity. Paul tells the church, endeavor to keep, kulinda, to keep that which was conveyed to you. Ile ambayo mokozi wetu Yesu Kristo alikuachia wewe na liniachia mimi. Paul tells the church, keep that. Keep that unity. Keep that bond of peace ambayo mwaliachio. Bwana Yesu wasifio. 
And so friends, as we, uh, as, as we gather, as we gather this morning, this is an invitation to you and I to consider how we might be agents in keeping that peace, in keeping that unity, in protecting it, in nurturing it, uh, because that is what Paul is telling the church. There are certain virtues that Paul shares that you and I should uphold. And he shares those uh, virtues, uh, if, if, if you read, uh, uh, if, if you read uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, certain virtues which Paul shares, he says, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. These are the virtues that Paul invites us to. With all lowliness, with all lowliness and gentleness. As you know elsewhere, he, he speaks of gentleness as a fruit of the spirit, isn't it? And so here he speaks about lowliness and gentleness with long suffering, bearing with one another. Kuvumiliana. Bearing with one another in love. Katika upendo. And so those are the virtues that Paul shares. Uh, virtues which will lead to unity and virtues which will uh, help us uh, to keep the bond of peace. When I yes was a few. We live in a, a society uh, that sometimes is not very patient with one another. Na hata katika kanisa, many times we, we are not patient with each other. And Paul is inviting us to that patience. Be, be humble. Uh, be humble and gentle. Kwamba muache kujiinua sana, niache kujiinua sana. And be patient. Kuenu avumilivu. Bearing one another in love. Tukivumiliana. I think one essential uh, character of a Christian is to be able to, to, to bear up, to give allowance for the failures of others. Uh, to give some allowance for the failures of others and not to be too quick to dismiss them, to judge them uh, rather harshly. Uh, Paul is inviting uh, the church at Ephesus uh, to, to allow, to allow uh, even for some failures, forbearance, mukivo miliana, with long suffering and in love. I'm not saying that we become a church of failure. Christian virtues, and that involves forbearing uh, with one another. And the other virtues which Paul uh, uh, speaks, speaks, speaks about, uh, which uh, I'll not get into in, in the interest of, uh, of time, I, I, I would like us to think about our country, I'd like us to, uh, to think about our church. And particularly as we, as we focus, as we focus to the coming general election, And this invitation to gentleness, this invitation to forbear, forbearance in love, this invitation to long suffering, how, how might you and I be, be agents in our communities around that which Paul is inviting the church to? And how might you and I 
I invite our different congregations. For us in Mumias, 170 churches. Uh, for you in, in your diocese, for you in your archdeaconry, uh, in your parishes, the communities you serve, how, how might we allow God uh, to use us around this journey, uh, this journey of the bonds of peace and the spirit of unity? I think it's for you and I to open our hearts and ask God, how, how can I be your, your agent? How might we enable more gentle communities uh, in a context where there's so much shouting every day and loudspeakers around us on pickups, left, right, and center, and very fiery speeches uh, in media, in funerals sometimes. Uh, in Mumias, we try very much to avoid those speeches. Uh, nowadays, in our funerals, uh, because those speeches actually don't build peace. And those speeches don't enhance unity. And following the invitation of His Grace, the Archbishop, we have said we will not allow our churches to be platforms for disunity and disharmony 